Baldur's Gate 3 was already the best game of 2023. And the Game Award goes to Baldur's Gate 3. Baldur's Gate 3. Baldur's Gate 3. Baldur's Gate 3. But a massive free update dropped that included permadeath, extra hard bosses, and no reloading. Usually, no matter how hard a game is, you can eventually win by retrying from your last save point. But in honor mode, you can't do this. Not only that, but Baldur's Gate 3 also received a brand new ending epilogue that takes place like six months after you finish the main story, allowing you to reflect on all your choices you made and witness the consequences of those choices. The game has changed. If you had previously completed the game on its hardest mode, well, that's no longer true. There's now content you haven't seen, even if you beat this game a hundred times. All this to say, I have never seen the closing epilogue, so in this video, my buddy and I will be playing the most challenging difficulty in the game with the end goal of seeing all of our beautiful decisions we make being captured in a conclusion that's tailor-made to us, with the legendary golden dice as a reward for our struggles. No reloading, no silly cheese strats, only one chance to talk or fight our way through the entire game. So without further ado, let's pick a character and begin our story. I've never really played a wizard before, nor have I seen Gale DeCarios' full story to the end, so I chose Gale, with Carlac in mind as a partner, as both of their character arcs revolve around a shortened time to be alive. Trauma bonding! My friend decided to back up our team with Lazel the fighter up front and Asteri on the rogue to just kill everything. We wake up on a ship operated by sushi face monsters who enjoy sucking out brains, so we became best friends with the first brain we saw in Stark Defiance. And because we chose Lazel as a starter character, we got introduced to a brand new character me and my friend have never seen in the three times we've completed Baldur's Gate prior. Dude, I've been playing for two minutes and I just found something new. <laughs> what the fuck? We fight some enemies, we meet some goth chick we have absolutely zero interest in at all, and we reach the helm of the sushi ship, also dragons. You haven't been safe, scumming, have you? <laughs> <laughs> Gale magically doesn't become a goopy pile on the beach, Lucere definitely did not win at life, and we gain our very first level up. Right around the corner is my friend's ideal companion for his Githyanki baddie, Asterion, the not-so-secret vampire. We stop for a moment to take in the beautiful scenery before witnessing the Druid's Grove under attack by a goblin horde. Can I just say real quick that making one of the first real fights in a Dungeons & Dragons game be a large group of goblins just feels so right. Like you've got your four-man party by now and the game just gives you a group of goblins and a whole wall of ally support. It's amazing! Anyway, even on the hardest difficulty, you can't really die here with characters like Will and Zevlor constantly backing you up. You also learn through playing this encounter that other NPCs can die in battle and you lose out on seeing where they would go if they had lived, creating this urgency to always save as many people as you can in case they're important later or you can help them. Aside from some embarrassing warm-up shots, <laughs> oh my god, we cleared the goblins with ease and arrived in the game's first sort of town area, the Druid's Grove. There's a whole lot to do here, but first we need to head to camp and rest up to recover our wizardly spells. Here at camp, I find yet another new character that I have never personally seen before. Tara, or Tara, a flying cat that talks and seemingly knows everything about Gale. Tara goes on to become such a meaningful character for Gale that I would go back to camp later in the game just to check if Tara had anything to say. How does this game contain so much freaking content? It's actually insane. And a good thing too. After sleeping, we head back to the grove to meet the locals, cast a tech thoughts any chance we get, and meet Volo, a famous character from D&D who teaches us a little thing about storytelling. My friend, every story benefits from a dragon. Around the corner, we find a small tiefling child being lured into the ocean by haunting singing. I learned the hard way this fight that mispositioning my wizard too far up would result in his immediate demise. A high ground bonus means nothing when you're down. Thankfully, Asterion was able to clutch this one out and even keep the child alive. Moving forward, we prevent an assassination. Asterion tries to perform a duet. Oh my god. It wasn't meant to be. He has a plus two for performance, too. <laughs> How awkwardly. Interesting. And the blighted village next door lets us do things like this. 
Oh, baby. Perfect. That's how you play honor mode. My friend spoke to the hag inside the grove while I found and spoke to the same hag outside the grove. But honestly, if you've ever fought the hag before, you know this isn't a glitch or a bug or something, but totally within the realm of possibility for the hag. Before taking the hag on, however, we need to clear out some leaders of the goblin camp and rescue the druid leader, Halsing. And to do that, without risking our own heads, again, honor mode, we might need some extra muscle. Take my bone home. Yes. Use it when the need arises. As a transmutation wizard, I'm adept at making potions and even have a chance at making two instead of one. So this is the first time I've played Baldur's Gate with an eye out for ingredients. Potions of speed and potions of invisibility in particular come to mind for some later stages of the adventure. Upon returning to camp, Will failed to read the very fine print of his contract with Batwoman, so he had to pay up with his very humanity. We sleep easy this night as much like Shadowheart, we absolutely don't care about Will or what happens to him this playthrough. With our characters fully rested, we head back to the goblin camp to murder their leaders and save Halsing, while still casting detect thoughts every chance I get. Asterion shows off why rogues are a thing. Boom. Wait, he's not in combat still? Dude, he's still not in combat, bro. What the hold on, fuck? Hold on, let him cook, let him cook. Dude, what is going on? Jesus! What the f- Okay, okay. Are you kidding? Karlak embraces her true calling as a light cleric. <laughs> oh my god. Wow. One of the goblin leaders gives me a near-death experience. Oh, oh, you said oh don't worry. God. But looting their gigantic pile of loot makes up for it, I guess. We fight another leader, Minthara, who makes a saving throw five times in a row. What? <laughs> and then something happened that if this were a normal video game, I would have 100% reloaded to a previous save. But remember, honor mode. You don't get to reload your saves. You can't do that. So you have to live with whatever happens, including the death of a major character. It's all my fault. We kill some more goblins. We steal all of their barrels. Gale shrinks himself down to fit in a hole. It's Gale. I was about to be like, who's this little royal looking motherfucker in our party? And we head into the Underdark where a creme brulee attacks us but is no match for our newly acquired fireball strat. We resurrect the creme brulee monster using mushroom magic and even learn it can drink potions like a person? A fact so hilarious that Lazel was literally unable to stop laughing on the floor about it. <laughs> well, she, you're not, you're not hypnotized anymore. But Lazel sure did shut the fuck up quick when we ran into a behold, I mean spectator, later in the Underdark. <laughs> it may have burned Lazel to death. Not gonna lie, we're feeling pretty confident by the strength of our fireballs at this point, so we decided to take on the hag up on the mainland. She tragically escaped with only one HP. Oh my god, she's got three health. God damn it! Come on, spear, spiritual no. weapon. Fuck! Oh. God damn it! <laughs> Apparently, this shortcoming gave Asterion the ick for Lazel because he wanted nothing to do with her at the party. We threw that night for killing the goblin leaders and saving everyone. Uh, mostly everyone. My dear, a night of passion. Uh, not with you, just to be clear. What? I mean, of course. Can you imagine? <laughs> No. Man, come on! Also, we tried to break the game, which would go on to work a little bit later, kinda. We wake up, return to the hag, and feather fall all the way down past Pretty the good. traps. We save her prisoner, Marina, we kill the hag, and heck, even save Marina's dead husband. Not quite the outcome intended, but I must say the technique was excellent. While those lovebirds head off to Baldur's Gate, we head back to the Underdark to experience the Wizard's Tower. Bernard the Construct has a devastating counterattack now where he static shocks you every time you hit him, but running away with the elevators allowed us to group all of them up pretty efficiently. Basically all that remains in Act 1 now is the Forge and the Kresh, so we borrow a boat to sail across to the land of mithril armor and helmets. This was the second time in our playthrough where my heart skipped a beat because I genuinely didn't know if we were going to make it out or not. Gale and Car Carlac didn't rest after the Wizard's Tower encounter, so I didn't really have a lot of options. Then Lazel knocked four enemies off their boat in one turn, and I could breathe again. 
Oh my god, Lazel! Nice. And it was at this moment that something dawned on me. That honor mode is what real Dungeons & Dragons is actually all about. No safe scumming, no retrying, no safety net. Death means the end of your journey. It means starting over again with new characters. Decisions have weight to them, and doing something really, really stupid will make you racked with guilt. I truly think every game in the future could benefit from some sort of feature like honor mode in them. A version of the game that just straight up doesn't let you reload and try again. It would make moments online of people finding secrets or accomplishing late game feats actually impressive because you know they did it all in one shot. Anyways, eventually we work our way into the Grim Forge and face off against its guardian. A fight so tough that it actually forced us to run away with our last surviving character and try again. The helmet it drops plus the two items you can craft here are just too good to pass up as it protects three out of four party members from being crit. With enough persistence and a lot of potion dropping, shout out to the transmutation potion crafting, we brought the hammer down on the guardian enough times for it to crumple. We do a tad bit more exploring, but mainly decide to head off toward the Githanki Kresh along the mountainside. Karlak demonstrates the power of a light cleric's flares. I'm not even in the fight and I'm you, reacting you for keep you. keep doing that because you're not in the fight? keep doing that? They're all gonna come fuck me in the ass right now. Get me up, would you? They have disadvantage forever. What the f- oh, yeah. Well, Lazel does Lazel things. <laughs> then we finally find the hardest part in all of Act 1. At the end of the crush level, you find yourself forced into a fight after a cutscene, meaning you can't position your team beforehand. You will be surrounded this fight, and the main enemy here has an insane new legendary action. The first fucking hit he made on this guy, it spawned two. And then I hit two hits on him and two more. What the fuck? Take my bone horn. Yes. Use it when the need arises. This was yet another okay, so life flashes before my eyes moment. I am fucking ready, definitely. No ogres. Stands to reason the sound of this primitive tool doesn't carry very far. Uh... So we take down the Githyanki attackers, puzzle our way into a hidden temple, Wait. totally not die a bunch to the traps along the way. I disarmed it. I successfully disarmed that, so you know and steal a legendary weapon that will undoubtedly be of help in Act 2. Also, it fits Karlak like a freaking light-themed glove. Oh, Lazel's so dead. Yeah, everyone, please. <laughs> we wrap up Act 1 by killing the Phantom Spider, which can now instantly cocoon and deal up to 80 damage to you if you don't burn them free with either fire or acid first. Got her. But it was worth it. Gale found his shiny little purple crystal, which can open his scary book of necromancy later on. And with that, we move on to Act 2, and our very first attempt at Honor Mode is still alive. Not bad. If you play the loot you find on Minthara or Nair's body, it makes everyone around you trust you and even offer to guide you into Act 2, meaning they all turn their back on you while you prepare your fireball. We fight some more and continue on to find the Last Light Inn, which is basically the Druid's Grove of Act 2, a hub base with allies and traders that's currently under attack by a nearby threat. Talk to everyone and quickly head over to the Githyanki Ambush, then we ambush the Githyanki ambush. <laughs> Next up, we have the three sons of Kethric, which are all given brand new legendary actions that can easily wipe your party. But they also all come with one major downside. You can just tell them to kill themselves, and they all do it. With those three super tough boss battles out of the way, you can't continue past Act 2 without completing the Shar Temple. Got it! 
<laughs> Later, bitch. You made it so much for the Okay. <laughs> so we speed run it as fast as we can to the point where we may have accidentally sided with the bad guys and just let the evil necromancer take away Shadowheart's entire quest line. Oh, oh shit. Rather ruthless of you to just hand her over like that. Oh. Dude, that was... Fuck, we fucked that up so bad. Shadowheart left our party after that one. Uh-oh. But you denied me that chance. Now my future is gone. Nothing but windblown ashes and wasted potential. Uh-oh. I can no longer suffer your company. Be grateful I don't rid myself think, of it I with a blade. I think Shadowheart's leaving, bro. Uh... Wait, I'm sorry, I can <laughs> this. Yeah. There is no <laughs> Not anymore. Oh, my God. It would be God. wise to forget me. I can only hope I one day forget you. Wow. No. Oh. Completed. Holy shit. To make up for it, we decided to jailbreak all the people being held captive in Moonrise Towers. You, however, are the clincher. The boss area of Act 2, and send them to the last light in. Before we approach the actual boss of Act 2, we need as much experience as we can get. What's your hat? So we wrap up as much of Act 2 as possible, and then we head on to face Kethrick, fully prepared. I'm gonna put Death Ward on Gale, so that if he dies, he doesn't die. We then got captured by Kethrick. Do it! Now! Oh yeah, I remember getting put in the tubes. We get put in the tubes. In the tubes. We're in the tubes. You know? And we have Good. to fight Balthazar here, I think. General Thorn has tasked me with relieving you of a certain okay. artifact. This is... Easily the worst predicament we've been in all campaign. All four of our party members are trapped inside these pods that they have to melee their way out of, while Balthazar and his minions are everywhere. Two of us manage to escape, but they quickly go down to the overwhelming number of enemies, leaving it all up to our wizard and cleric, who are both silenced and deal pitiful damage to the pods they're in. All hope is basically lost at this point, as we await the end of our first honor run. But then, Gale remembers his time spent helping others on his journey and recently being given a special bomb as a reward. Gale has a thing for bombs, so here goes nothing. Unleash me. Fuck it. Thank Lady Mistra, it worked. And the Death's Dance spell cast by Karlak before we went after Kethrick brought Gale back to life with one HP. Speed potions must be drank. Magic missiles cannot miss the pod containing Karlak. This Die. isn't over. Gale and Lazel and Asterion and Karlak have come too far. We scrape our way through Balthazar and his minions, and we make it out by the skin of our teeth. Bro, we didn't die, dog. Bro, we have our playthrough. Everything is Holy fine. Holy shit. Cancel that fire though, please. <laughs> we finished exploring the rest of this god-awful place and prepare for what may be yet another final fight of our lives. Ketherick himself. We can't really even believe we made it this far, as even on tactician difficulty, we usually die at least once during the game, and having put this much investment into a playthrough really makes it feel special and like it has just so much higher stakes than other games. Anyway, Kethrick is a scary fight, especially with his backup Mind Flayer and like a horde of zombies on the side. But you get Aelin Dame, a literal demigod on your side, so damaging Kethrick in his second form wasn't too bad. Again, bombs for the win. We should be able to throw this bomb at those ones and it go boom, right? I do believe. Here goes nothing. <gasps> he, he died, dude. Oh yeah, baby! Oh, 
Holy me. fuck, he died. Let's fucking go. And with the big bad of Act 2 down, we hit the road for Baldur's Gate, the final chapter of our quest to beat Honor Mode and get the golden dice on our very first try. Act 3 starts off pretty normal. We're attacked by bullying bodyguards. We help out refugees discover a bomb in their toy donations, and we enjoy a carnival. Until we don't enjoy the carnival anymore, because a clown tried to break my head with a hammer. So Asterion breaks his way into a meeting with Lord Gortash to side with him and avoid a fight with like 20 Optimus Primes in the room. We spend some time basically traveling around, exploring Act 3 a little bit, but then my friend and I encountered something truly tragic. See, normally, when you discover the Thieves' Guild in the sewers, you witness it getting attacked by a rival gang. However, for us, something went horribly wrong. Not only did this gang attack the Guild, but the Guild tried to arrest one of our party members at the same time, resulting in this weird confusion of AI and massive pileup of enemies that, instead of fighting each other, are all teaming up to fight against us. Make a melee attack as a bonus action. Holy shit. Yeah, there's a lot. Are you I gotta, fighting everybody at the guild right I, now? I don't know what happened. I was in conversation with a bard, and now everyone is fighting me. And to make matters worse, the AI glitched so hard that they wouldn't fully kill us. They left our down characters in an infinite state of constantly skipping their turns, almost aware that we would just revive them at camp if they killed us, so instead they just puppy guarded our bodies. Asterion and Lazel tried to go back in to save Karlak, but they were killed and stunned before they even got a turn. With just Gale left and the other three party members permanently in this state of combat, we tried using him to fully kill Lazel and Asterion, but Gale got caught. And with just one single arrow of thunder, this happens. No, 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 this, this might be it. Oh my god, that's it. What the fuck? That's it. That's it. That's depressing. All to a glitch. We just lost a 44 hour campaign to a massive glitch that causes two rival factions to gang up on you and a second glitch on top of that where they wouldn't fully finish you off after downing you. Not finishing us off was the most anticlimactic, unceremonious way this adventure could possibly go out. When we successfully escaped the fight and were waiting for our teammates to die so we could revive them but realized the game broke, the AI was glitched, and there was nothing we could do, it was a pretty massive bummer. Playing Honor Mode in Baldur's Gate 3 is a truly unique and unforgettable experience, and it's a shame when stuff like this happens, but Unceremonious Deaths are a much more realistic ending to a story than any epic conclusion if you really think about it. Unfortunately for our first Gale adventure, we were ambushed in the Thieves' Guild and experienced some serious glitches, meaning it cost me and my friend everything. It wasn't the new legendary boss actions or failing a crucial skill check, but a bug. What if another glitch similar to this happens where all of the goblins and druids unite forces in Act 1 against us? What if the Last Light Inn and Moonrise Towers team up against us? In a game with such brutally punishing consequences, game-breaking bugs can extra deteriorate the overall experience. Hopefully this gets ironed out in the future because until then, me and my friend will never ever be setting foot in the Thieves' Guild ever, ever, ever again. Hey, thanks for watching. This is our longest video to date. If you liked all the script writing and voiceover and effort it took to make this, maybe consider liking the video and subscribing for more gaming content. Sorry it took a while, but since TikTok is where we upload all of our short form content, YouTube is gonna be where all of our long form content lives. So I'm gonna try to probably put more time and effort into these videos, making them longer and less frequent. But if you like frequent content, check out Joystick Journal on TikTok. We make shorts on there. Some of them are pretty popping. All right, that's it. See you guys next time.